Hi everyone, um, my name is Lisa Bayless and I'm here in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, far away, very far away from you. Lovely's in Dublin right now and I'm so thrilled to be invited to come and speak with you. Um, I'm sure you've heard a little bit about me, but uh, I am a high school, school emotional and academic counselor here in Victoria. I work full time in that role. I have a master's in counseling psychology and I've been doing this job uh, both here and internationally for two, almost 15 years. Um, and in the last little while, I've had a strong focus on positive psychology in my life and positive education. I've done a lot of learning. And since then, I've become one of the leads in my district around positive education and mindfulness. And so I had the privilege of meeting your lovely host, Marin and Hugh, this summer. And I'm so thrilled to be able to come and be a part of uh, your learning today and hopefully I can offer you a little bit of um, information or some research and some um, experiences that I've been working through that have helped me uh, share this knowledge and share some of the things that I'm doing. Anyways, I wanted to start with this because this slide that well-being should be at the heart of education and not periphery is, is truly a, a, a strong part of my value system and what I believe and how I educate and how I work with kids. And, um, and I come from a strong background that well-being should be at the heart of not just the students in our education, but the entire staff. And so the educators, the support staff, the, from the janitor to the head teacher, um, this should be what we're all working authentically at, um, getting to a point of us all flourishing. And so that we can really ground ourselves in this so when we preach it and teach it, we're coming from a really authentic place. And I'm going to sort of talk about why I think that's important today. Um, so I'm a practitioner of all of this and this opportunity to practice what I call positive education and mindfulness has led me back to this, this group called IPEN or the International Positive Education Network. Um, and I've become a global representative for them in sharing some of the work that they do across the world. Um, and, you know, I, I do this work within my own district, but I try and share it wherever I can. So this uh, International Positive Education Network, I'm sure you're going to learn about this a little bit today. And as you go through um, learning with, with your lovely hosts today, I'm hoping they're going to continue to talk about this. But what it's truly saying is where we're combining not only the academics as educators that we want to bring to our students, we want them to be um, intelligent and creative people, but we also want to bring in their character strengths and their well-being and that this is a place where they all sort of meet together. Um, and so this IPEN is a place of, it's this new global network and their concept is to really reform policy is that, that it, you know, it, policy doesn't change overnight and any of us have been educators for a long time, you know that sometimes it can feel like policy is always bouncing up against a big wall. Um, and they're working really hard to make this a global policy shift that education is reforming um, so that well-being becomes at the heart of every teacher and every lesson, that this has become a change in our practice. Um, and this is really an exciting, exciting concept that it's not just another um, big idea and it's not just another program that you sort of get handed to saying, here, go teach this, that this is really something that we're um, putting into our practice on a regular too a regular time. Um, and the other piece that they do is they, the, this idea of supporting collaboration. So this, where you're coming together right now to change, to really create opportunity to talk about these things, to really have the opportunity to learn with each other. Um, this is how we support each other and these connections and this collaboration um, we know is at the heart of educator well-being and really important in, in creating our own strengths as we move forward. Really important in, in creating our own strengths as we move forward. Um, I love this quote by Sir Anthony Sutherland, who is a head teacher in in England and I guess one of the leading people in, in iPad. And he says this, this teaching of happiness, it's no longer just psychobabble or mumbo jumbo. Because when I heard Harvard and Harvard and Cambridge were talking about it seriously, this is something that I could teach. I thought it would became really interesting. And, and I think that this is something that, you know, for a long time, we all sort of knew these things. We all knew that talking about well-being or good health or, or this concept of being at our very best was something we all knew. But what's happening now is the science and the research are really supporting this and establishing it. 
And when the science and research get behind it, it's a really exciting feeling because um, we're starting to see academia come out and support a lot of this. And we're seeing a, you know, a philosophical shift, not just from idea base, but from the science and the research that's happening. And, and some of our biggest institutes are really investing in this. Uh, one of my favorite opportunities is I got the opportunity to go down to the University of Berkeley in, in San Francisco. Um, they have a place there called the Greater Good Science Center. Look that up. It's amazing, the research that's coming out of there. And this is where they really started tying in to greater good education and how do we all bring in concepts of gratitude and, and grit and optimism and, and how do we create students that are resilient and well. Um, and so, and mindful, and these, these are things that are coming up now in our, in our education system that we really want to, to bring a focus on. And so this focus of, on well-being is a big shift that's really exciting, and I, I love it, and I love that I get to talk about it. So again, IPEN's idea is that it's, we're not putting away academics, that academics is really an important part of learners, and so many of us go into education because we truly believe in teaching, and we really truly believe in our, in our core subjects and what we believe in, whether we're uh, a maths teacher or whether we're teaching English literature or we're teaching philosophy or science or chemistry. Um, we tend to be very true to our subjects and our core and what we believe and we want to educate and we want to share these ideas. But what they're saying is that there's this, there's this shift, this paradigm shift, that it's not just enough. We can't just be at the top of a front of a classroom and preaching anymore, that education's changing a little bit and this development of character strengths and well-being, this intrinsic knowledge of how to care for oneself is going to support the academics, that we can't just do just the academics, this fulfillment of intellectual potential. It has to be supported with a strong sense of character and well-being. Um, positive education truly is about learning how to flourish while you go to school. And this research is continuing to come out. So, you know, I'm creating some of these quotes or these pictures from different people, whether they're practitioners or researchers. Um, we're seeing more and more of the people talking about why um, flourishing is going to be important in how we enhance our academics and how we build resiliency um, and the other term around self-regulation, how we really make sure that we look at that. Um, so IPEN has been really trying to make this case for positive education to create this reform, to change this shift. I mean, they talk about how it can be taught that well-being is learnable. And for so often, we didn't teach these in school. It wasn't something that was happening. It was something that was expected to be learned at home, that, that value systems and character strengths and who we are as people, wasn't we didn't have time for it in schools. And what they're making the shift is that really it should be taught that youth are spending more time in schools at a long time and that um, not Nine out of 10 parents, if you ask them, they want teachers in schools to be talking about this. If you ask parents, you know, what do they want from their kids? You know, they don't necessarily say, I want them to get the top mark in chemistry. They say, I want my kids to be happy. I want my kids to be resilient. I want my students or my, my children to, to really make connections with friends. I want them to not feel lonely. This is what we want for our kids. And as a mother, I get that, you know. I want my kids to be kind and compassionate. I want them to be able to know how to support other people when they're feeling hurt. I want them to have a deep sense of empathy and compassion for our world. So um, if I'm not the only one, if I'm the only one teaching it, they're not going to get it. They need to hear these messages from all the adults in our lives because we know that children need to hear these messages from more than just one person. And so um, this concept of character education is really growing globally and it's pretty exciting. Sean Aker talks about having a positive mindset or happiness is one of the greatest competitive advantages you can give someone. He is probably one of the reasons that I got into this, this concept of positive psychology. Um, and he really has done a lot of work around happiness and how happiness is a choice and how happiness spreads if we let it, if there's a ripple effect with it. And that truly it's an advantage. And that when we're bringing this into our schools and our classrooms, what happens is this positive mindset, this happiness is, can go back to the homes of the students that we're growing. And if we want to create a positive culture in our world, that this is the place to do it. We can start in schools without um, having fear around it, that really our kids need us to uh, approach them with happiness and positivity. And they need to learn because negativity sticks to us. We have this concept that, you know, we have a fear brain. It's a natural instinct in our brain where, where we see that, you know, we, we tend to go towards the negative and we really have to work on creating that positive culture. 
Positive education has stemmed from positive psychology. And one of the founding fathers of positive psychology, Martin Seligman, talks about this concept of flourishing and how as human beings, we want to get to a place of flourishing. We want to our kids to flourish in our in the worlds in life, and so there's sort of a balance of flourishing when they experience perma. And this is a term that comes out of positive psychology. This is the research right now that to to flourish, we sort of need to nourish all these parts of of ourselves in this concept of perma. Perma stands for uh, the P, a positive, a balance of positive emotions. And Barbara Fredrickson, who's a researcher um, in the south, of, in the south of the United States, she does a lot of work around this concept of broaden and build. That we actually need to broaden the the positive emotions in our life. That negativity sticks to our brain like Velcro. We can have the most beautiful day. It can be a fabulous day of all kinds of good interactions and good things. And then we have one negative thing happen to us. And what happens at the end of the day when we go home? We tend to remember that one negative thing and all that good stuff falls away. And we need to actually focus on building those neural pathways of goodness in our lives. And so that balance of positive emotions is really important. Um, the next one that is really important is that engagement with the world. And this is that concept of like being so fully engaged in something or in the state of flow. Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi is another researcher and he talks about this concept called flow. Um, and this is really essential in education, in our educational world where, um, you know, kids, we're seeing them check out a little bit more and not learning. And we want them to be engaged. And they only engage when they can come to a place of curiosity and this concept of connection to their learning. So how are we making sure that their learning is a, from a place of connection so that they can be fully engaged, that, that they're, they're learning because they want to, not because they have to. And some of that stems from the R, which is good relationships with other. Chris Peterson, the other founding father of positive psychology, said, other people matter, period. And this is a, a huge reminder in education how, you know, you know, we don't go in it for the fame and the glory and the money that we go in it because we build good relationships with children, with students, and that we want to see them learn and, and, and develop. And truly, this is about really getting to know our kids getting to know our students, building that relationship first, um, knowing them as a human being first and a learner second, really making those connections, taking the time to know who they are and what are their strengths and what they're good at. So we can get them to that next point, which is the M, which is that meaning, that strong sense of meaning and moral purpose. This is that purpose in life that they have something that they want to learn or live for or do because they feel really connected to something. Um, and we know that we can see the students whose eyes light up because all of a sudden that what they're learning has the connection to their life or to their meaning and what, what they're doing and why they're doing it. Um, and then to that state of accomplishment, so where that they're working through something. This is Angela Lee Duckworth does a lot of work around grit in this in this concept of accomplishment. That if we want to get to a final point, we really need to dig in and we need to learn. We need to fail. We need to get up. We need to work with our growth mindset. We need to go through this process of wanting to get to a state of accomplishment, going through a process to get there. And then I include vitality and optimal wellness in a state of flourishing because if we're not physically well, it's really hard to get to all those other things. So exercising, sleeping, eating properly, of course, are these are things that we also need to be teaching in schools and our, you know, physical education and health programs are making sure that our students are really getting a good sense of optimal well-being, optimal wellness in their life. So I include this a little bit because I, I want you to know that this is this is happening, that policy is shifting, that things are changing around the world. You can see some of these things through the United Kingdom to Australia. Bhutan, they're implement, implementing this throughout their whole school, every school. Uh, and they have, what, the highest happiness quotient in the world. So they actually measure happiness in their country. And and what they're realizing is they have this strong sense of happiness amongst the world because they have implemented some of these concepts in schools and that they're actually full schools that are taking this practice on and doing it. The whole school has a change of ethos and a change in, in implementation and how they're doing that. Sort of the essence of, of what I wanted to share with you today and, and a little bit of information about what I'm doing here and what's happening in the world and what's happening in positive education. And, and I'm really excited about it. And I'm so thrilled that you're beginning this conversation in your country in Ireland and I'm so um, excited that this conversation this is going to continue and so um, stay in touch um, you can find me on Facebook at Lisa Bayless educator 
and I'm on uh, Twitter. I tend to be have a strong um, presence in social media. I share a lot of the research that's happening out in the positive education, positive psychology world through those um, positive education platforms. And I'm working towards creating a blog where I can start um, getting that information out a little bit more. But it's my privilege and pleasure to have spent this short bit of time with you. I appreciate your time and I wish you all the best in all your endeavors and in creating a positive atmosphere in, and creating a good sense of well-being for yourself and for your students. Thank you.